Hi, welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In this presentation, we're going to start changing the other things that we've been holding constant. Income, prices of other goods, and so on. We're going to show that these changes lead to shifts in the entire demand curve. First, just another reminder, what is a demand curve? Well, a person's demand curve for a product shows, given the price, how much of the product that person would like to buy, holding all other relevant factors fixed. You've heard it before, but let's just do it one more time. Remember, we're looking at an individual's demand curve. Notice that the product we're dealing with here is apples. Given the price, we have price taking built in. A demand curve only makes sense if the buyer is a price taker. It's how much of a product the person would like to buy. So the demand curve tells a person's plans, what they would like to do. It may not be what they can actually do. And it holds all other relevant factors fixed. Income, price of other goods, expectations, tastes, and so on. They're the things we're going to be changing in a second. The individual we're looking at is Jackie, and we're looking at her demand for apples. We know some things about Jackie. Jackie is a student who earns $120 per week. That's her income. She likes apples, but she also likes bananas, and we know that the price of bananas is $5 per kilogram. She also likes to eat apple pie and ice cream. Given Jackie's income, given the price of bananas, given the price of ice cream, what does Jackie's demand curve for apples look like? Well, remember, if the price of apples is above $12 per kilogram, Jackie doesn't want to buy any apples. As the price drops, Jackie wants to buy more apples. If you remember, Jackie's demand curve goes through $9 and 4 kilograms. In other words, if the price of apples is $9 per kilogram, Jackie wants to just buy 4 kilograms of apples. If the price drops further from $9, kilogram, from $9 down to, say, $4, then Jackie would like to buy 5.5 kilograms, if the price drops further, the demand increases further until eventually we hit the horizontal axis. It's useful to note that if the price of apples drops for Jackie from, say, $9 down to $4, that means that Jackie's going to want to buy some more apples. How do we represent that? Well, it's represented by a movement along Jackie's demand curve. When the price of apples changes, we can show this by a shift along Jackie's demand curve for apples. The change in price leads to a change in the quantity of apples Jackie demands. But what happens to Jackie's demand curve if we change either her income or the price of bananas? Let me start with a definition. Two goods are substitutes if a rise in the price of one good leads to a rise in the quantity demanded of the other good. Before we show this on a graph, Let's just think about this. Suppose Jackie likes eating apples, she likes eating bananas, and she likes to have a bit of a mix of them. What does that mean? Well, when she goes to the fruit and vegetable shop, she looks at the price of apples, she looks at the price of bananas. If bananas are particularly expensive, she'll tend to buy less bananas and more apples. If the price of bananas is really cheap, she'll tend to buy more bananas and less apples. So in other words, if bananas are expensive, a rise in the price of bananas, she buys more apples. A rise in the quantity of apples demanded. A fall in the price of bananas, she buys less apples. So bananas and apples are substitutes for Jackie. How do we show this on our diagram? Well, let's draw in Jackie's original demand curve. That's the blue line here. And remember that this is a demand curve that Jackie has for apples when bananas are $6 per kilogram. What happens if we change the price of bananas? Suppose the price of bananas rises to $8 per kilogram and bananas and apples are substitutes for Jackie. Well, if the price of bananas has gone up, then Jackie will want to buy more apples for any given price of apples. She used to buy four kilograms of apples when the price of apples was $9 a kilogram and bananas were $6 per kilogram. But now the price of bananas have gone up. So if the price of apples is $9 per kilogram, Jackie will probably want to buy fewer bananas and more apples. So she might be at, say, 5 kilograms of apples at a point out here. What about if the price of apples is $4 per kilogram? 
Well, when bananas were $6 per kilogram, Jackie wanted 5.5 kilograms of apples. Now bananas are more expensive, Jackie's going to tend to want to buy more than 5.5 kilograms of apples if the price is $4 per kilogram of apples. So she might be out here somewhere at around 6.5 kilograms. So here's another point on Jackie's demand curve. We can keep doing that for every price. If we did that, we'd get a whole bunch of uh, points and we can join them up and get Jackie's new demand curve for apples. So this new black demand curve that we've got here is Jackie's demand curve for apples when the price of bananas is $8 per kilogram. Notice that it lies to the right of Jackie's original demand curve. That reflects that bananas and apples are substitutes. As the price of bananas goes up, given the price of apples, Jackie wants to buy more apples. What about if we've got a fall in the price of bananas? So say bananas fall to a price of $2 per kilogram. Well, we've got Jackie's original demand curve here. Remember, that's drawn when bananas were $6 per kilogram. When the price of bananas falls, if bananas and apples are substitutes, Jackie will tend to switch from apples to bananas. So, for example, if the price of apples is $9 per kilogram, she used to want to buy 4 kilograms of apples, but hey, bananas are now cheap. Who's going to buy apples? She might only, say, buy 2 kilograms of apples when the price of apples is $9 per kilogram. What about if the price of apples is $4 per kilogram? Well, she used to buy 5.5 kilograms of apples, but hey, bananas are cheap, so she's probably going to buy fewer apples now. She might, in fact, cut back to only, say, 3 kilograms of apples at the price of $4 per kilogram. So we now have some points on Jackie's new demand curve. We can again join up all these points and we'll get Jackie's new demand curve. So our new black demand curve is Jackie's demand for apples when the price of bananas is $2 per kilogram. Notice that it lies everywhere to the left of the original demand curve. That's because apples and bananas are substitutes for Jackie. As the price of bananas has fallen, Jackie will tend to buy fewer apples at any price of apples. Just a final word of warning though. We've said that apples and bananas are substitutes for Jackie. That doesn't mean they're substitutes for everybody. You have to be careful what one person views as substitutes, another person might like to have together, what we call complements. So our next definition, two goods are complements. If a rise in the price of one good leads to a fall in the demand for the other good. Let me give you some examples. Let's say bread and butter. They tend to be, go together. If the price of bread goes up, you'll probably buy less butter. They're complements. For Jackie, well, she likes having apple pie and ice cream. She likes having it together. So if the price of ice cream goes up, she'll probably want to have fewer apples. A rise in the price of ice cream leads to a fall in the quantity demanded of other goods, in this case apples. So apples and ice cream are complements for Jackie. Again, be really careful what's complementary goods for one person may be substitutes for another. Simple example, you've probably heard, if you've watched American sitcoms, of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Jelly's just the American name for jam. So if you come from the USA, you probably view peanut butter and jam as complementary products. You have them together on your toast for breakfast. If you come from Australia, you probably think that's disgusting. You would view jam and peanut butter as substitutes. You would have one or other on your toast in the morning. You certainly wouldn't have both. What's a compliment for Americans is a substitute for Australians. So let's start analysing compliments for Jackie. We'll fix the initial price of ice cream at $10 per tub. And we're going to ask the question, what happens to Jackie's demand curve for apples if the price of ice cream rises to $20 per tub? So here's Jackie's original demand curve when ice cream was $10 per tub. What's going to happen when ice cream goes up in price? Well, less apple pie and ice cream for Jackie. So if the price of apples was $9 per kilogram, Instead of wanting to buy, say, four kilograms of apples, 
Jackie might only want to buy, say, two kilograms of apples. And if the price of apples was, say, four dollars per kilogram, instead of wanting to buy five and a half kilograms of apples, Jackie might now only want to buy, say, four and a half kilograms of apples. So, we've found two points on Jackie's new demand curve. Her demand curve for apples when the price of ice cream is $20 per tub. We could keep going. We would get Jackie's new demand curve back here to the left of her old demand curve. Why to the left? Well, the rise in the price of ice cream has caused Jackie to reduce the quantity of apples she demands at any price of apples. That's because ice cream and apples are compliments for Jackie. What happens if the price of ice cream falls to $5 per tub from $10 per tub? Well, you should be getting the idea by now. Ice cream and apples are compliments for Jackie. So if the price of ice cream goes down, more apple pie and ice cream for Jackie, she's going to want to buy more apples. That's going to mean that her demand curve will be shifted out here to the right. If the price of apples is $9 per kilo, she'll want more than 4 kilos of apples. If the price is $4 per kilo, she'll want more than 5.5 kilograms of apples. So the black demand curve is Jackie's demand curve when the price of ice cream is only $5 per tub. We can also ask what happens to Jackie's demand curve for apples when her income changes. Let's suppose Jackie gets a new part-time job. Instead of only earning $120 per week, she now earns $200 a week. Let me give you some definitions. A good is called a normal good if the quantity of, that a person demands increases as their income increases. A good is called an inferior good if the quantity that a person demands falls as income increases. What are some examples of these? Well, probably scotch fillet, meals out at expensive restaurants, good cars. They're probably all normal goods. When you get richer, you tend to buy more of them. What could be an inferior good? Well, cheap takeaway food, second-hand clothes from the Salvation Army shop. As you get richer, you tend to buy less of those things. They're inferior goods. What about apples and Jackie? Let's start with Jackie's demand curve before she gets a pay rise. So we've got her original demand curve in blue. And we're going to ask the question, what happens when Jackie gets a pay rise so her income goes up to $200 a week and apples are a normal good for Jackie? Well, if apples are a normal good, then Jackie wants to buy more apples as her income goes up. In other words, if the price of apples is $9 per kilogram, instead of wanting to buy 4 kilograms, she might want to buy a few more apples. Let's say she wants to buy 5 kilograms of apples. And similarly, if the price of apples is $4 per kilogram, when she was poorer, she used to buy only 5.5 kilogram. Now she might want to buy a few more apples because they're a normal good. Her income's gone up. She might want to buy, say, 7 kilograms of apples. So again, we've got two points on Jackie's new demand curve. We can draw Jackie's new demand curve for apples, given her higher level of income. And it's this black curve here. No Notice that this new demand curve lies everywhere to the right of Jackie's original demand curve. That reflects that apples are a normal good. So as Jackie's income has gone up, given the price of apples, she wants to buy more apples. But what if apples were an inferior good for Jackie? At any price of apples, Jackie's income's gone up, but apples are an inferior good for her, so she wants to buy fewer apples. So at the price of, say, $9 per kilo of apples, Jackie might now only want to buy, say, 3 kilogram. And at the price of $4 per kilogram of apples, Jackie might now only want to buy, say, 4.5 kilograms. So, we have two new points on Jackie's demand curve. We can join the points together with all the other points and we would get Jackie's new demand curve for apples given that her income's risen to $200 per week but apples are inferior. Notice it lies everywhere to the left of the original demand curve because as her income goes up, 
If apples are inferior, she wants to buy less apples. OK, so that's it. We've now seen what happens if we have a change in either the price of other goods or the income for Jackie. Next, we're going to start bringing other people in to look at the market demand curve.